AngelBird's done it again. They're the first to market with a 4TB capacity Type-B CF Express card. This literally gives you hours upon hours of 8K RAW recording on a single card. The 4TB AV Pro also supports 12K video. As you can see by looking at the marketing material here, it says 12K+. Plus. I wonder who they've been talking to or what cameras they're testing in-house. They certainly haven't told me. But on a video format and resolution more down to earth like the Canon R5's 8K oversampled 4K, you can get an astonishing 18.9 hours of recording on a single card. This helps reduce range anxiety for those cameras with a single CF Express card slot like the R5, the R5C, and the R3. It's perfect for travel, remote shooting, television, and movie production, and the 4TB card is based on the same technology found in the AV Pro SE and the AV Pro SX cards released in December. As far as I know, at the time of recording this video, the Canon R5, the R5C, the R3, and the Nikon Z9 don't support card sizes larger than 2TB. If you were to take one of these 4TB cards and put it in those cameras and format it, you'd end up with just over 2TB. So why is this, you might be wondering? Well, all these cameras recognize the file allocation table known as FAT, and it has limitations that don't allow it to see spaces larger than 2 terabytes. To support capacities much larger than 2 terabytes, such as the 4 terabyte AV Pro, the GYD partition table needs to be supported. It's otherwise known as GPT. So you might be wondering then, why on earth is Angelbird releasing this card already? Well, they actually haven't released it. They have announced the card, and it'll be available for shipping in early March. Right now they're taking pre-orders, so if you go to their website, and you find the AV Pro, you can see the 1TB, 2TB, and 4TB option. But when you click on the 4TB, it does say to contact sales. There is one camera that does recognize the 4TB AV Pro CF Express card slot, and that's the Red V Raptor. However, if you go ahead and put one of these cards in the camera right now, the 4TB, it says it's unapproved. If you're shooting on a professional production set where you're shooting for Netflix, Prime, you're shooting for a television show or a movie show, if you see unapproved, your director's not going to be happy because that means if something goes wrong, you're not insured. Now, they just recently got the 2TB approved, and I suspect the 4TB will be approved very shortly. I think the reason why they're announcing it now is that we're probably not too far away from these other cameras being able to support larger capacity cards. So what you want to keep an eye out for is any firmware update where they talk about support for GPT, GUID, or larger capacity CF Express cards. This video isn't all about the 4TB AV Pro CF Express card. Last week when Angelbird did announce the 4TB, they also made several other announcements. And one of those was a refresh of the 1TB and the 2TB in the Mark II. The 1TB, the 2TB, and the 4TB had the same specifications. The Mark IIs can support a minimum sustained write speed of 1300 megabytes per second, not bits, or 1.3 gigabytes per second, whereas the Mark I supported 1000 megabytes per second. Now, the read speed has bumped up a little bit. The maximum read speed is now 1785 megabytes per second, up from 1780. The actual write performance of the Red V Raptor shooting in 8K RAW at 120 frames per second generates a sustained stream of 850 megabytes per second. And the R5's 8K 30 frames per second, or the R5C's 8K 60, the R3's 6K 60, and the Nikon Z9's 8K 30 and 8K 60 generate 325 megabytes per second. There isn't a stills hybrid camera out there that the AV Pros cannot handle. So what this slide is telling us is not only are these cards fast, but there isn't a camera out there that these cards can't handle. But another important point to make here, and it doesn't matter if your card has just been formatted and you've got nothing on it, or you're getting very close to that capacity, the card is still going to be able to generate that minimum sustained write speed of 1300 megabytes per second. Along with the AV Pro, Angelbird announced the AV Pro CF Express XT Mark II last week. These cards are designed for customers that want the maximum endurance and performance, and will provide extended RAW, 12K plus video and photo reproduction. 
all three cards, the 330 gigabyte, the 660 gigabyte, and the 1320 gigabyte are available for sale now. And where they differ from the AV Pro is you'll notice the maximum sustained write speed is bumped up from 1300 megabytes per second to a staggering 1500 megabytes per second, or about 1.5 gigabytes. This provides more than enough speed for the Red V Raptor at 8K RAW, 120 frames per second, and for the Nikon Z9 with that 45.7 megapixel sensor, shooting at 20 frames per second, raw, burst, lossless, generating a total throughput of 1.2 gigabytes per second. Over the course of decades using various SD cards and CF Express cards, one thing I've noticed every time I go to format these and test them, that the minimum sustained write speed that the cameras talk about are quite often not what I get to see when I test the cards out. Now, what I used to do when I bought a new card, I'd use something like Blackmagic's disk tool to see what the maximum read and write performance was, or the sustained read and write performance. And it would generally test over only five gigabytes. And what I ended up noticing was, sometimes the actual performance I got was about 60 to 70% of what was advertised. So I kind of wondered, you know, am I being ripped off here? Is this one of those things like fuel mileage on a car? You don't expect to get anything close to what is advertised. No, the reason why we see such a huge difference is in the camera, the camera talks natively to the storage. There's no USB protocol, there's no drivers to get in the way. There's no other tasks, applications, or services to get in the way. You see, on Windows or Mac OS, they're multitasking operating systems. And even if you don't have any other applications running, there's usually dozens of services that are monitoring, monitoring all sorts of things like ports, that are monitoring throughput, that are doing antivirus checking, and all sorts of other things. And these get in the way of you being able to see the maximum performance. So keep in mind, that when you're shopping for memory cards for your computer, for your camera, for a drone, for example, this is what you really need to pay very careful attention to, and that is the minimum sustained write speed. And this is what you expect, this is what you can expect to see inside your camera. Forget the maximum read speed, because even Angelbird says it here, and it says 1785 megabytes per second. And a lot of them say the same thing, or they might say 1600 or 1700 but you want to find out what the minimum sustained write speed is. So for example, I did a review on the Pair Gear not too long ago, and it had a minimum sustained write speed of around 400 to 420 megabytes per second, one fourth of the advertised speed. So keep an eye out for the minimum sustained write speed. That's what you're looking for when you're looking at purchasing a card. I really like this diagram because it helps simplify Angelbird's offering when it comes to CF Express Type B cards. The AV Pro SE and the AV Pro SX were released last December, and they're aimed at those that are budget sensitive. Both the 512 gig and the 160 gig are priced at a staggering $179.99 each card. Now, the 512 gigabyte card has a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second, which is perfect for shooting video. You can easily shoot 8K30, 8K60. Basically, whatever the R5 can throw it at, the R5C, the R3, the Nikon Z9, whatever they can throw at it in terms of video, this card can handle it. But when it comes to stills, if you're shooting 20 frames per second lossless on the Nikon Z9, this isn't going to keep up. If you're doing a little bit of spray and pray, you're doing maybe half a second, you're shooting mechanical on the R5, or you're shooting electronic on the Z9, you'll be okay. But if you really, really like to shoot a lot of high-speed sports and fast actions, then you're really looking at the AV Pro SX. But the AV Pro CF Express Mark II is my favorite. It comes in three file sizes, the one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte. The one terabyte and two terabyte are available for sale right now on Angelbird's website, but the four terabyte is available for pre-order and ships in March. These cards are capable of a staggering 1300 megabytes per second right and the maximum write speed is 1550. And this is really kind of your old round card. If you shoot a lot of video, if you shoot a lot of 8K, if you shoot a lot of 4K, you're shooting high bit rates. This gives you an awful lot of capacity that's aimed at video production, advanced cinematography, and basically any sort of high bit rate video recording. It's also great for those that do travel or longer videos, as well as television and video productions. But it's the AV Pro CF Express XT Mark II that really gives you the fastest speeds possible at 1,480 megabytes per second. 
they come in three sizes, 330 gigabytes, 660 gigabytes, and 1.3 terabytes. And while the maximum write speed is 1600 megabytes per second, it's that 1480 megabytes per second that you wanna pay attention to. This card, the XT, is really designed for those that want to extend their durability and performance. It's for people on the go, rental companies, those that need the absolute highest endurance that they can possibly get for file production, television, movie production, if you're shooting for Netflix, or anything where you're shooting the highest bitrate video, this is the card to get. So what is the pricing, you might ask? Well, not only did Angelbird increase the minimum sustained write speed of the AV Pro CF Express Mark II, they dropped the price of the one terabyte. The Mark I sold for $799.99. The one terabyte can now be had for a staggeringly low price of $479.99. You get that same sustained write speed of 1300 megabytes for the one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte. Each of these cards is capable of 12K plus raw recording the same advanced processor, the same ability to generate an uninterrupted read-write performance throughout the car's entire capacity, advanced thermal management, power adaption management, and host power loss prevention. The 2 terabyte is $959.99, while the 4 terabyte will set you back $1,799.99. The AV Pro CF Express XT cards had the same price points. The 330 gigabyte is $479.99. The 660 gigabyte is $959.99. And the 1.3 terabyte is $1799.99. Shooting 8K DCI RAW, I was able to shoot for the full 30 minutes before recording stopped due to that 30 minute record limit. I then repeated the test on the 2 terabyte and 4 terabyte cards, only this time recording multiple times, and I didn't have any issues but I really didn't expect any because this resolution and frame rate only requires 325 megabytes per second, well below the AV Pro's minimum sustained write speed of 1300 megabytes per second. Without giving the Canon R5 or the AV Pro CF Express card a break, I switched to stills, set the focus to manual, shooting RAW and JPEG at 45 megapixels. Mechanical tops out at 12 frames per second, I was able to shoot for 20 seconds without going to buffer, so I ended the test. I immediately switched over to electronic, but sadly forgot to set the focus again. I shot for 20 seconds without the R5 using the buffer. I repeated the test again, and the same result. Then I tried the AV Pro cards again. I wanted to see how long I could shoot high speed with 1300 megabytes per second as the minimum sustained write speed. I was able to shoot for 20 seconds without the buffer being used. At first, I didn't like the results because I really couldn't see a difference between the AV Pro and the AV Pro XT. After all, they both went 20 seconds in my test. I formatted the cards and restarted the test. This time, I didn't stop at 20 seconds. This time, I shot until I got to the buffer. The AV Pro 1TB, 2TB, and 4TB got 494, 492, and 496 shots shooting electronic, and that's both stills and raw. Shooting on the AV Pro XT, I was able to get 538 RAW and JPEG stills before going to the buffer. My recommendation is to get the AV Pro, unless of course you're shooting a lot of high-speed continuous stills of 20 and 30 frames per second for a long period of time. For video, well, the AV Pro can easily handle what the Red V Raptor can throw out when it's shooting 8K RAW at 120 frames per second. But if you're looking on a budget side or you're facing cost constraints, I seriously recommend taking a look at the AV Pro SE and the AV Pro SX. The AV Pro SE is designed at video users supporting up to 8K RAW at 60 frames per second. And the AV Pro SX has the same performance envelope as the AV Pro XT, but in a smaller size at 160 gigabytes and a smaller price to match. But what I'd like to do now is take a little bit of time and go behind the scenes of Angelbird and its founder, Roman Rabich. You see, about 10, 12 years ago, Roman was working away doing what musicians do. And at one point he got an idea, but he needed to find a clip or some a music score or something. He didn't tell me exactly what it was, but he was looking for something on one of his storage cards and he couldn't find it. And in that process of trying to find what it was, it disrupted his creative flow. But for the rest of us, it turned out to be a good thing because you see, Roman in that moment said, you know, there's got to be a better way of doing this. We need storage cards that are more durable with larger capacities 
and that can work in different operating environments. And that led to the idea that, well, why can't, how hard can it be? Why can't I start up my own company? Now, those weren't his exact words, but at that point, it gave Roman the impetus to go ahead and found Angelbird. And even today, Roman was telling me that Angelbird is filled with a lot of creatives, videographers, photographers, musicians, athletes, people who are doing those once in a lifetime events on their weekends and weeknights and want to capture it onto film and use reliable storage, storage that can operate in different operating environments. And one of the stories that Roman tells is when he just recently started up the company and a photographer came to him. This photographer shot whales and he worked in, well, challenging environments. And he had a list of specifications and he asked Roman, could you develop something for me that I could use in my environment? They design, engineer, assemble, fabricate, and package all under a single roof. Validation, it is very, very important. For every single piece of storage that I get, I run it through some simple tests. And it doesn't matter if I purchase it directly from Angelbird or if I buy it online from amazon.ca.com.co.uk. It doesn't matter. There's an awful lot of fakes going around these days. And even if it's not a fake, there's always a one in a million chance that you could get a dud. So I always validate it. What I use is two pieces of software. Now on Windows, it's called H2 Test. And on the Mac, it's F3 Write. And what it does is it writes to every single block of the card as fast as it can. At the end of the test, you'll see that it completed the test at a certain speed and measured in megabytes or gigabytes per second. And at that point, you know it's successful. You can go ahead and format it and put it in your camera, or in this case, in the Ninja 5. However, if it starts generating errors, that's a pretty good sign that you bought a fake card. Always test, even if you're not planning on using it right away. This software has saved my bacon many, many times. There's nothing worse than getting out there and finding out you got a fake card. And the problem with fake cards, it's not like they fill up and let you know it filled up and you thought you bought 128 gig and you only recorded, you know, 16 gigs worth. What happens is they monkey around with the firmware so it doesn't give you a, an error. What they'll do is they'll write, they'll fill up the card and they'll go back and loop over it again. So when you get back to your computer, you didn't get the last 15 minutes or 10 minutes of video, you end up with corrupt files and you've lost your content. So please validate before you put your cards in use. Oh, and one last thing, please go ahead and click like and subscribe. I take it as a virtual pat on the back and it really does help this channel grow. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.